hello there YouTube my name is Lori and welcome to Lori's thrifty kitchen pantry if you are new welcome to my channel I'm so glad that you found me and if you're a returning subscriber welcome back I'm a bit under the weather today but we're still gonna get into the kitchen because we I need to be getting some things done so today is a you see what you get kind of day but we'll we'll get through it but today is another installment of soup timber where i've been showing some different soup recipes and getting them canned and on my shelf for winter so today we are doing the easiest veggie soup recipe that you will ever come across i promise so you, I am doing this in the pressure canner, but you can absolutely do it on the stove top. You can do it in a crock pot. You can do it in your instant pot. So it, this is a quick, really easy stove top recipe that you can have done in probably 20 minutes if, if you wanted to do it on the stove top. So there's just two main ingredients if you want to add salt you can add salt i'm i'm not adding salt to mine until i actually open a jar and go to eat it because things always taste different to me sometimes i want salt in my food and sometimes i don't so i usually just add my salt the day that i'm going to eat it but this is one of those recipes you can add whatever spice to it you can add meat to it if you add meat to it you do have to increase the processing time so you will have to google the kind of meat that you're adding and see how long that you need to process it but today we're just doing a vegetarian vegetable soup and the two ingredients are a bag of frozen veg veggies that now you want to make sure that these thaw and um, get down to room temperature because you don't want to put fro cold frozen vegetables into glass jars. And this is just the Winn-Dixie brand of frozen mixed vegetables. You can use whatever brand of mixed vegetables that you want. And now for my surprise ingredient, the for the broth for the vegetable soup, what I use, well, this is actually a substitution for what I usually use because they were out of what I usually get, but I am just using tomato juice. It's the e easy peasy. So this is just, uh, I actually got the last four bottles of tomato juice that the store had, so I have two low-sodium juices and two with the regular amount of salt. So I just mixed one of the low-sodium with, with one of the regular salted juices. I, I really prefer to use Bloody Mary mix when I do my soup just because all of the spices are in it and you don't have to add a thing to it. So it just gives it a little little more of a kit to the soup, but to, tomato juice is just as good. So all we're gonna do is fill our jars halfway with the mixed vegetables and the, fill it up to an inch head space with the tomato juice and put our lids and rings on and put it in the canner and we're set to go. Uh, if you want to do it in the stove top, you just open your bag of vegetables and you could even do it for frozen if you're doing it in the stove pot. Stove top, instant pot, or crock pot, you can, can use your vegetables frozen. So if you're doing it on the stove, you just dump everything in a pan and heat it up until it starts to bubble and your vegetables are cooked same for the crock pot and the instant pot just depends on your on your pot you can uh, pressure cook it for maybe 15 minutes is about all it will take in an instant pot so 
this soup is so easy to put together. I really think you guys are going to like this one. So let's give, give this a try. I already have six of my eight jars done. And in the canner, I'll bring you along for the other two just just to speed the process up a little bit because, again, I wasn't feeling the greatest when I started this project, so I, I got enough out of the way that I'm able to finish up in pretty good shape. So let's get into the kitchen and let's get canning. All right, you can see here I got things pretty well set up. I got a bowl here. I'm just going to open my bag of veggies here. And we're going to dump this in our bowl just to make it easier to get the veggies out. And here you can see it's just your standard mixed veggies, nothing spectacular. And we are just going to fill our jars. You want them about up to halfway so that way you have enough room to have plenty of broth in your jars. So I'm just going to scoop out my veggies here. I'm just using a half cup measuring thing because that's what I pulled out when I got my supplies out. And you can see here that looks pretty good. That actually looks really pretty. I, th I think this is going to make a soup that's going to look nice sitting on your shelf. And that one bag gave me two jars. I started out with four bags. So I got, I will get eight pint jars of soup out of four bags. So now I have my tomato, tomato juice here and I'm just going to ladle the soup into the jars. Remember we're going up to this first rim here. And that looks pretty good. And we're going to use our debubbling tool here. Make sure that we get this all mixed in and that there's no air pockets in there. And get all the air bubbles out. And we will do the same with this jar. And again, I started out with two almost almost two whole bottles of tomato juice which did pretty much did our eight pint jars of soup and we will get this deep bubbled that looks pretty good we got our inch of headspace there. So we're going to wipe down our rims here. This is just a cloth that's been soaking in a jar of vinegar. Uh, if you've been on my channel, you've, you've seen my jar of rags. I can show you in here in just a second. All I did was cut up a an old t-shirt and I um, cut it into squares and put it in a jar with some 
vinegar on it to use instead of paper towels. So here's my jar of, of rags that I use to wipe my rooms off. I was using a lot of paper towels, had a lot of waste going on with the paper towels. It was getting very expensive. So I decided I was just going to start using an old t-shirt that I was done with. It was clean, so I just cut it into squares and put it in the jar with the vinegar on it. So they're all ready to go. And, and we have our nice uh, clean lids here that I've got on the jars. Our lids go on fingertip tight, which I've learned my fingers, I need to go a little bit tighter on just because I don't have a lot of strength in my hands. So I'm putting mine on a bit tighter so that, that the rings don't come off during the canning process. I have had that happen a couple of times. So I will bring you over here to the canner. And let's see if I can bring you guys up a little bit more. And you can see in the canner I have my other jars along with my water. I have about two inches of water in the canner. So we'll get our jars in here. I have Ethel here all ready to go. She's been all inspected. Her lid has been cleaned and she's been washed and she is ready to work. So we're good to go. So I have a full canner of vegetable soup and you saw, you all saw how easy that was. So now our handle here has an arrow and our lid here has an arrow so you just line the two up i'm getting a little better at getting the lid on sometimes it can be a bit tricky to get the lid on and now you turn the stove on now i start i've been canning long enough now that I know Ethel likes to get started on high and then once things get to going and we get to the step where the jiggler starts working then I, I turn her down but for right now we're gonna let her get going and get all warmed up and when things start working inside the canner we will see some steam come out of this vent it will be a steady stream of steam that will come out of there we will set a timer for 10 minutes when that 10 minutes is up I will take my weighted jiggler here and put that on that vent there the safety valve up back here will pop up and lock, lock the lid in place and we will be ready to go so once i put the jiggler on this temperature gauge will get up to 10 pounds of pressure because i'm using a, a 10 pound weighted jiggler the, that gets up to pressure it will start the jiggler will start moving and then I will turn the stove down Ethel likes to be between four and six on my stove and it will keep her weight right at ten the ten pounds and then I will set my timer for 55 minutes because I'm doing pint jars and there's no meat in it. And that that's all there is, all about all there is to it. So I will bring you back when she starts steaming so you can 
can hear what that sounds like. Canning is just a matter of following the steps and then getting used to what all of the, the different noises sound like and, and how it's supposed to sound. So once you've, you can your first couple of times, you're going to be good, be set and good to go. So I know I can leave Ethel for about 20 minutes or so before we start to, to get our steam. And we're, we're all set, so I'll bring you back in about 20 minutes. Okay, you can see we have our steady stream of steam coming out of the canner. And I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes. And we will be back. Alright, we are back. It's been 10 minutes. You can see the safety valve here in the back has popped up. So now we're just going to carefully put our jiggler on. And when this gets up here to 10 pounds of pressure, this will start doing a little hula dance. And I will turn the stove down to between four and six and she will stay right at that 10 pounds of pressure for 55 minutes. So canning's very easy. It's just a matter of following the steps, knowing your altitude and how many pounds your jiggler needs to be. And it, it's just really easy to do. So I will bring you back in a couple minutes. You can already see the dial starting to move up. So we'll We'll be back in just a couple minutes. All right, that took less than five minutes. So here's what the jiggler looks like and sounds like. Got my timer set for 55 minutes. And I'm going to turn the stove down to five and just let us all do her thing. And when my timer goes off, I will turn the stove off. You do not want to touch anything with the canner. Just let your canner sit there and cool down. And when that dial gets, when the dial gets back to Zero, it will be cool enough that I will crack the lid and I will let the lid sit for maybe five minutes and then I will bring you guys back and we will take the lid off the canner and the us our to soup out. So I will bring you back. I will probably take close to an hour and 30 minutes before I bring it back. So I will see you guys in a bit. And we are back. It's been quite a while. I actually went to the store while Ethel cooled down. So I just got home and cracked the lid open, let it set for a minute. And now we're getting ready to take the jars out. So let's get to it so far it smells really good so I will set you down here see if I can reach you up a little bit all right let's get these start oh I heard a ping I heard a ping I love hearing pings pinging charts makes me really happy and look at that soup how easy was this soup to put together? It literally took me five minutes to get all of my jars done. And we will have eight jars of this amazing looking soup on our shelf. And I even did some errands while Ethel cooled off so I made good use of my time. 
Oh my goodness, that soup looks absolutely beautiful. I am so happy that, that this turned out and there went another Charlotte Ping. So I think we're going to have eight jars of perfectly sealed vegetable soup. And we can always go back later and add meat to it if we want to add meat to it. We can add some cooked ground beef or cooked pork or cooked chicken. You can add whatever you want to this. You can, if you decide you want an Italian vegetable soup, you can throw in some Italian seasoning while you're warming your soup up. If you decide you want a spicy Mexican soup, you can add some chili powder and maybe some taco mix or any, any kind of spice that you want to it. And that being said, look at that soup. And this is jars of soup. When I um, substitute teaching, I can warm up in the morning and put in a thermos and take with me for my lunch. It will be just, there went another jar. That will make a great school lunch on days that I need, need some lunch to take with me. Look at those jars bubbling away. Those are absolutely beautiful jars of soup. And there you have it. That concludes this edition of Lori's Thrifty Kitchen Pantry. I just heard several more jars ping. So I think I'm going to have eight jars of seal vegetable soup. And how pretty did those jars look? They are amazing and it was two ingredients a bag of mixed veggies and a bottle of tomato juice that was it and from that point on that that's just a jumping off point from that point on you can add whatever else you want i do strongly advise if you add more potatoes to the mix to just make sure that the potatoes are peeled and washed and diced about the same size as the other veggies in the bag so that it will cook properly so so that that's the only thing i could think of to suggest for your soup um if you want to add beans that would be great to add beans to just make sure that your beans are fully cooked before you add them if you're using canned beans you should be good to go they they'll already be be pretty much cooked so the deal you with know, this soup isn't anything goes whatever you feel like each time you open a jar you can make a, a totally different meal so however you want to do it and you you saw how easy that was was to can up your own food there was nothing difficult at all if you're interested in canning there are tons and tons of canning videos on YouTube. Just make sure that you follow proper guidelines. I know there are people who are water bath canning low acid foods. I would not suggest doing that. You saw that I pressure canned my soup even though I used tomato juice which has acid in it. The vegetables were low acid or no acid so I pressure canned it instead of water bath canning it so just just make sure that you follow good guidelines and I I always say your kitchen your rules so just do your homework go to trusted websites to get your information Google does pretty good but it's not always right so uh, double check any facts that you get from Google with another source just to make sure that you're getting accurate information because you want your food to be safe for you and your family. So just give give canning a try. It's, it's not, not that difficult and it's so rewarding to see all those jars of food on your shelf and know that it's going to be there. When I first lost my 
job and was running out of money. I didn't didn't have cars of food on my shelf. I had nothing. So knowing that these cars of food are on my shelf is almost like like a security blanket. Uh, you you know that you're going to be taken care of no matter what what comes along. If we suddenly get hit by a hurricane and we lose our power, I have jars of food that, yeah, probably taste better if they're hot, but they're all cooked. Uh, all I have to do is open up a jar, and it can be warmed up on a barbecue grill, which, which I do have, so it's... The, it just really means a lot to have those jars on the shelf. And I was even able to utilize my time in between while Ethel was cooling down to go get food for Mr. Bubba so he he will not be mad at me because when, when the guinea pig's mad at you, there's, there's just nothing right in the world until he's not mad at you anymore. So I, I wanted to make sure that I had food here for him. So while Ethel cooled down, I ran to the store and came back and cracked the lid open and put my stuff away and and then pulled my jars out. So it's it's really easy to can. I've even done late night canning sessions where as soon as the canner was had the proper amount of time and I turned the stove off, I went to bed and pulled the, the jars out the next morning and they, they were perfectly fine. They were all sealed and it was it was it was good so just try canning if, if you're new to it just start out with small batches and you'll be fine we've done three recipes of, of soup so far and that is um let's see eight jars times three i think is 24 i'm terrible at math but all of those jars of food for just one day's work and today's work wasn't hardly any work at all so give it a try and let me know what down below in the comments what kind of soups you guys have been enjoying for September and again uh, I forgot to mention earlier if you have any prayer requests make sure to put that down below in the comments we have started getting prayer requests in when I get those, I will pin it up to the top so everyone can see it until I get the next request. And then I'll put the next request up so that people can actually see the prayer requests as they come in. It's just, it, it warms my heart to know that our community is lifting each other up in this way. So just leave those requests down below and... That concludes this edition of Lori's Thrifty Kitchen Pantry. I am feeling a bit better. I wasn't sure when I started this canning project that I could finish it, but I finished it and went to the store, and I think I'm going to be good for, for work tomorrow, so I'm feeling much better. And right right now, things, things are good, so that is a big win. So everyone have a blessed week and i'm going to schedule a live chat for tuesday evening at seven o'clock seems to be a good time for everyone there's no other major live chats going on at that time that i know of because i didn't want mine to interfere with other chats that everyone enjoys going to so I will do mine Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. We will discuss the rest of September and be thinking of your favorite crock pot recipes for Crocktober. So we'll, we'll discuss our, some of our favorite, favorite crock pot recipes. So until the next time, I will see you all on the next video. Bye!